Good morning, fam. Good morning. I just got gas. We are nice and full. What are we doing this morning? We're headed to Detroit. Um, I want to do a an overnight uh, camping video in Detroit. Almost 24 hours. So we're headed down there to scope out a potential spot for me to camp at. And um, it's uh, what I like about Detroit is they have a ton of like parking, um, uh, a ton of park paid parking that you can pay for that's downtown close to a lot of restaurants and hotels, casinos, clubs, things like that. So I did find a place that I think I want to kind of chill at for the day and um, camp out overnight. Um, but before I pay for this parking, I want to see the area. I want to take a look. I did look at the area on Google Maps, um, but I want to kind of take a look at the parking um, place and make sure there are parking spots because one thing about Detroit, they will they will pack you in like sardines. It'll be perfect, but you may not be able to get out until whoever is blocking you in comes back and Lord knows when that'll be. So we are headed down town Detroit to go check out my potential 24 hour spot. So let's head out. Um, I'll see you guys uh, in a bit. at the parking spot so I'm gonna see if I can find me a place to park uh, that parking structure looks mighty empty ain't nobody parking there we're gonna keep going though so this parking structure that I'm leaving says that I can only stay till five o'clock and if I stay past five my shit will be towed so let's try this one so um there are there is no parking attendant so I was looking and looking and finally there was a guy, looks like a maintenance guy or just a nice gentleman was telling me that there is no parking attendant. He's uh, in the next lot over, but he, you could pay online for this lot, but usually lots will have like their address out front. So when you go online to pay, you'll know which lot you're paying for, but I couldn't find it. So the guy that was there was nice enough to tell me what lot this was at and I found it online. I paid uh, until tomorrow morning, but I just want to check with the parking attendant that um, if I'm, you know, gone, if, when I come back, I'm technically not going to leave. I'm going to stay here. But when I come back, you know, will my vehicle be towed if I'm here the next day? So I'm going to go ask the parking attendant and figure this out. But for now, I'm in a good spot. The spot that I parked at does not say reserved or anything like that. Um, it looks like a fairly nice area that I'm parked in. And yeah, I like the area. There's cameras and stuff like that on buildings. And um, I think this is the courthouse I'm facing. I'm like actually probably behind the courthouse. But let me get comfortable. Let me get situated. I'm gonna go talk to the parking attendant and then uh, make sure I'm okay to stay here through the night and then um, I'll show you guys where I'm at where I'm parked and what it looks like so give me a minute um, I'll see you guys in a bit so before you got before I show you guys where I'm parked I want to make sure that I can park here and stay here overnight I don't want to get my hopes up so we're gonna go talk to the parking lot attendant and then go from there so I'll see you guys in a bit downtown guys about to go find this parking lot attendant 
according to the maintenance guy, he's in that lot right over there. Woo! This is kind of where I'm parked, the area. Um, if you see, my van is like right there. But uh, it's a good area. And I talked to one of the attendants of a different lot and he said the city doesn't allow overnight. But the lot that I paid for allowed you to pay for the next day. So we'll see. Since I couldn't find the owner of the parking structure that I was at, or the parking uh, lot that I was at, paid parking, um, I left. I didn't want to take a risk of waking up and, you know, dealing with a ticket or having my vehicle towed. So I found another parking structure of an owner. The owner actually owned it, and he said that I can park there. I don't think I can fit. I don't know, can I fit? That's a tight squeeze. Yeah, okay, um, he told me, he told me, he told, he told me, he told you $10, but you're staying over 3 o'clock, right? He, yeah, like, I told him like 5 in the morning. He said, I gotta pay for today and tomorrow. Okay, yeah, so that's the 10 bucks here. Am I good? I plenty of space? All right. It's like, girl, you can't drive. Don't do that to me. I can drive. Don't do that to me. Here's 20. Thank you. Yes, this goes in my window. Do you have any tape? Because this is going to slide. I think I got tape. Don't worry about it. It's going to slide right down into the cracks. Thank you, sir. You have a good day. I'm finally parked and secured. I got really lucky. Uh guys because i'm at a different parking structure it's been <laughs> a whirlwind and it's a learning experience for me and it'll be a learning experience for you guys for those of you who, ch who choose to do this um lifestyle or whether it's temporary or permanent um i was talking to the uh parking lot attendant who worked here at this particular parking lot that i'm at and i asked him hey i'm you know i'm about to go out if i come back at like five in the morning um Will my vehicle be towed? Will I have a ticket? Mind you, I'm not leaving. I'm just picking the brain and seeing if this lot is open 24 hours, if it's monitored, all of that stuff. That's how I'm doing it. And he was like, uh, well, I don't know. The, ask the owner. He's right there. And the owner was in his car about to leave. And the owner rolled his window down. I was like, hey, can I help you? He's a fairly young guy. It looks like he's in his mid-40s. And um, I just explained my situation. I said, hey, I'm going to hang out in Detroit, you know. I plan on leaving around five in the morning. If I leave my vehicle in this lot, uh, when I come back, will it be towed or will I have a ticket? Is this a 24 hour lot? He's like, no, but you have to pay for two for two days. Since you're staying today and leaving in the morning, you'll have to pay for two days. But just know that when my uh, parking lot attendant leaves, whatever happens to your vehicle, that's on you. We have no responsibility. And I said, okay, I'm okay with that. Because mind you, I'm gonna be in my vehicle. I probably leave to go explore and see if I can find a restaurant or somewhere to eat. Um, maybe grab a drink at the casino or something. But other than that, I'm going to be in this vehicle 99% of the time. And I was like, bet, I'm cool with that. And um, mind you, uh, he they charge $5 a day. So I pay $10 to park here. So, you know, that's another way you guys can do that. I, I understand and realize there are people that I can't um, afford the $10 that don't have money. And I've showed you guys other alternatives of stealth camping, where to look, how to look. Um, but this is for people who, who, who might have a little bit of money, um, peace of mind, maybe just out and about kind of exhausted, want somewhere safe, you know, somewhere to sleep for the night, uh, where they can kind of blend in a little bit without worrying about getting the knock, especially if you're in a downtown area where it's really hard to find parking in downtown, especially Detroit. Um, you can, there's a ton of parking parking lots that range anywhere from five dollars and i think i've seen them as high as like 20 bucks um depending on the night the area 
and this is a nice area um it's right by the casino and i like i said i paid 10 bucks so again for peace of mind it's just another idea so let me show you guys where i'm parked this is where i'm parked um there was a vehicle right here but he just left he's leaving out it's nice little scenery mm, kind of pan over here uh this is an at&t building uh, got a car in front of me and then car on the side of me I, you can tell that some of these cars have been here uh, for a while because some of them have snow on them um piled up for a couple days and some of them don't so i have a feeling that i'll be uh, like maybe one of two vehicles in here tonight but we'll see we'll play it by ear so that's where i'm at guys also too i'm gonna kind of fill out the lot um as the night goes on if i don't feel safe there there have been several videos of mine that i filmed that i've left the area um out of just not feeling safe so guys remember even if you pay or you're stealthing and you're not paying if you don't feel safe in an area don't just stay because you're like well i paid i ain't going nowhere or i'm tired i'm not moving no listen to your intuition if you don't feel safe leave it's 10 bucks okay you lost it whatever but you have your life you know you have your vehicle so that's where i'm at let me get situated and then we'll go kind of looking around and seeing what's going on out here. I do want to cook. I do have some food that I, I do plan on cooking, but for right now, uh, I think I'm going to chill. I have a lot of work to do. I am, like I said, I am trying to leave Michigan. I still have a few loose ends to tie up as far as like paperwork and things like that. Um, and I will put out a video on all of that once I leave because some of you, I know a lot of you are probably thinking like, what else you have to do? Just leave. No, it's, it's really not that easy. But I'm not saying anything right now because I'm still in the process of trying to change residencies and um, things like that. So I do have to make some phone calls, um, ensure other things are okay. If I do relocate to my new state, will I still be able to transfer over certain insurances, certain, you know, banks, things like that. So it, it's, it's a lot. So um, I do have a lot of work to do. Uh, we will go walking around and exploring for a little bit. But I think for the most part, I might just cook because I do have food and I, I'm trying my best not to spend money I want to save. So let me get situated and I'll see you guys in a bit. <sighs> okay. okay, this is where I'm parked. Got a nice view. There is my baby. Got cars around me. I got lights above me. You know, you just still got to be aware of where you park, no matter if it's in a parking structure or not. You still have to be security aware all right let's go this is the area outside of where i'm parked five bucks so let's go uh find something to get into okay Go. I'm parked in there. And there's the casino right there. So we're just going to go hang out there. I love Detroit. I don't come down here as often as I should because I just don't know my way around the city. It's nice down here. It's quiet. It's peaceful. There are ways. And I'll keep stressing in every video that I do an overnight or a stealth camp video or, or, or an overnight parking video. Sometimes the easiest way to find parking is just ask the owner. Um, they may say it's free or they may charge you uh, something small. It depends on what you're willing to do for a, a good night's sleep or a, a play. You know, it depends on what you want for not only a good night's sleep, but for just comfort and ease of not having to you know search around for a place to stay just ask the owner you know get creative
enjoying around the area. Uh, we'll go look around a little bit later, see how the city lights up at night. But for now, let's go have a drink. Let's see if they'll let me enter in through the hotel. So I had to turn the volume off on this clip because they were playing loud music in the bar, but it was pretty relaxing. I had me a Bud Light. I watched a couple of sports commentary shows and that was pretty much it. The ambiance was spot on. For it being a Friday afternoon, the streets are pretty quiet. Just everybody's at work, grinding. Downtown Detroit is so nice. Got hotels, lots of par paid parking. You got the uh, rail cart. I think that's what it's called. Something else. I can't remember like the name. There's my baby headed back. Still got some work to do. Whew. Hopefully tonight goes by really smooth. Ooh. It's time to get up from this little baby nap and uh, get a little more work done. Um, this is what the parking lot is currently looking like. It's almost five o'clock. Um, some vehicles, a lot of vehicles have left, but there's still a lot of vehicles. Let's check out my other side and see what it looks like. This is my passenger side. That's a hotel, by the way, I'm assuming. But, um, yeah, the vehicle had left. And uh, 
Yeah, that's what it's looking like out my passenger side. And then up front, let's take a look. Oh. And then there's up front, and there's my sticker. I might move because I don't like that this car is still in front of me. If they're still there at night, I'm probably going to move, but we'll see. But if they leave, I'm going to pull forward just so I don't feel like I'm being blocked in. If you get really scared, you have to hurry up or you'll pee in your pants. Are the Germans peeing their pants now? I'm sure they are. I'm going to be talking to you guys while I cook. I'm going to just make some shrimp and use all of my favorite seasonings with rice. So I'm going to try this oil that I bought at Meyer. It is extra virgin olive oil, chili pepper infused. So we're going to try that. Ooh. So here we go. <laughs> Actual chili peppers. I know it's a lot, but I'm going to be throwing rice in here too. So keep that in mind. Like, look at that. Got the chili peppers and everything. Oh, it smells really good. Now we have our shrimp that's been, that's been thawing out and it's thawed. Well, that's strong. It's very, very windy out. My van has been rocking. Still a decent amount of cars in the parking lot. Um, I thought I was going to be alone, but there are a decent amount that I feel, you know, like I'm blending pretty well. A work truck came at some point and it's parked kind of behind me. So now, while this is cooking, we're going to use cayenne pepper. This is going to be spicy, guys. Paprika. Um, as I've been cooking and experimenting over the last seven months since I started van life, I kind of know what seasonings I like that go well together, that pair wear, that pair well together. Chili powder. Don't sleep on this combination, guys. Don't be, don't be too scared to season your stuff. And then onion salt. We're going to use a little bit of that because of salt. And then I forgot the garlic. How did I forget the garlic? Garlic powder. This one's almost out, but we have another one, but we won't need it. Okay, that's it. Now we're gonna flip it. Remember, shrimp doesn't take long to cook. We still gotta cook the rice. I'm gonna use this sauce to make the rice. This is going to be hot and spicy. I'll do a few more. Okay, that should be enough. Now we're going to pull the shrimp. The shrimp is cooked. it down low and then cook these tomatoes down now we're gonna fill the rice so it can absorb that flavor we're gonna add butter and I, I'm almost I'm out so we're going to be scraping what little butter we have and throw it on top of that rice. And that's all for the butter. Like, we are going through all our food. Cook those tomatoes down a bit. Let's turn that up a bit. You can make your own sauce, guys. Butter, 
whatever seasonings and flavors that were left from the uh, juices of the shrimp. I'm making a big mess. I'll clean it. We're going to add a little bit of unsweetened coconut milk to make this very little bit of creamy. There we go. Don't want to add that much, just a little bit. Now we're going to add the shrimp back in with whatever juice from the shrimp. We're just going to mix it in. This is creamy, it's hearty, it's satiating, it's comforting. And it's a one pot meal, guys. Here are the finished results. I mean, look at the color. You know it's full of flavor. Okay. You saw what I put in it. We talked about it. First bite goes to you. Have that bite right there. The rice is creamy, okay? The flavor is, I can't even describe it. I have been like really honing in on what seasonings go well together for almost seven months and when I tell you the seasonings that I used in this please use and that chili infused extra virgin olive oil it is so good it's spicy but it's so good you don't even need the cayenne pepper the chili oil is spicy and hot enough but if you like spice like me cayenne pepper The tomatoes, <laughs> I, I don't even know what to call this dish, but this is my creation. Mm. The shrimp is so good. It's cooked just right. Mm. Look at that. We're not adding no cheese in that. I don't want to taste any cheese. This is so good. Please try it. Mm. It's spicy. And the butter, it was just enough. <clears throat> the oil, I bought it at Meyer. I'll show it again. Mm, mm, mm. I bought this at Meyer. Normally I put my oils in the refrigerator. I'm not putting that in the refrigerator. No, no, absolutely not. I mean, look at that. Have another bite. It is, oh, I thought I was up. It is so good. Mm. It's spicy, I ain't gonna lie, but it's so, so good. This is probably my top, this is probably one of my top three dishes that I've made on this channel since starting this channel this is probably number th this is in the top three for sure i mean look at that shrimp it's like cooked to absolute perfection let's get a shrimp let's get a tomato and the tomatoes are so soft that when you put them in your mouth it just it just burst burst with flavor mm.
Okay, enough about the food. Um, today was good. You, it was it was definitely um, trial and, trial and error today. Um, I do what I normally do. I go and I scope out the area before I commit, which I did. Um, what I've learned today is that you don't always have to stealth camp at a place, right? If you're in a position where the owner works at the place that they own, what's the worst that can happen if you ask to stay overnight? They either charge you a fee or you get it for free or they say no. And if it's in a good area and if it's a safe area, if the fee is reasonable, why not? For peace of mind, a new experience, why not? Um, today was the first time in seven months, almost, I've been doing van life for seven months, actually, January 23rd, I already hit my seven months, been. And in the seven months, I've never spoke with an owner or asked an owner or anything. This is the first time. And so this is definitely another option that you can do. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> who that's hot. That is hot. <clears throat> I want to make it clear that I am not trying to force or push my life on anybody. Um, this is a journey that I decided to bark on because this is something that I've wanted to, I've wanted to do for years. I've just never had the courage or guts to do it. Um, not necessarily live in an RV, but just live in a vehicle. Um, I don't claim to have a perfect life or have all the answers i'm new at it and i decided to document my journey on social media for those of you who are considering doing a life like this that you can watch my life and learn from my mistakes or learn from my successes um i make no mistake i am not trying to force or push or tell anybody they should do van life or live in a van please live where you're comfortable in living I'm just giving you options. I'm giving those of you options who have said in my comments that you want to do this lifestyle, that you're considering doing this lifestyle. This is, it's hard. It's not easy. Um, living in a van, living in a vehicle is not easy. It's not. There are pros and cons to both. The pro to living in a car, because I lived in my car for a month and a half before I bought this Class B RV. One of the pros of living in a car, it's just easier to stealth camp. It's easier to blend. You're in a car. But the con of living in a car is it, it gets uncomfortable. You can't stand up. can't really move around like you want. In the summer, it's freaking hot. In winter, you're freaking cold. You can't adjust. I've done it in a van like this, a Class B. The pro is you can stand up, move around. You have a bathroom, a kitchen, all of that. The con is it's hard to blend. It's hard to it's hard to stealth camp. You stick out. I mean, I got a a, a solar panel up top and, and a air conditioner. Like you can tell, someone lives in here. You know, you just gotta get creative. Okay, I'm done. I'm done now rambling. Mm, mm -mm. And now that I let this sit and let the, the flavors meld together, I'm making this again tomorrow. I'm buying more shrimp and I'm making this again tomorrow. Mm. This is good. Make no mistake about it. Van life is hard. I'm speaking from my experience. Um, if you've watched my videos from the beginning, you've seen the ups and downs and down, down, downs that I've been through. It's not easy, you know? Uh, finding places to sleep every day, making sure that you're safe. The biggest thing for me is my safety and security above everything. And I stress that in almost all my videos. That takes 
utmost presidents over my comfortability, over making my van look cool. No, I would rather pay the money to make sure this thing is Fort Knox before I put money into making my van look cool. So for those of you considering doing van life or car life, make no mistake, it will not be easy. It will not. Um, but if you really want to live a life on the road, then just understand that there are going to be obstacles. Oh, it's always something. And you always have to plan. For me, I plan. I don't just go through life like, oh, if, uh, today I'll just, uh, we'll see. No, I, I'm weeks ahead. I'm always planning. I'm always mapping things out. I'm always on my toes. I'm always aware of my surroundings. I never ever am just oblivious to what's going on. Even now that I'm stealth camping in Detroit, I'm always looking out my windows, peeping, making sure, looking around the areas, watching cars. And you may call me paranoid, but this is what it takes to survive on the road. You have to be aware. Do not be naive to think that people are not watching or want to break in your van or seeing if anybody's in there or waiting for you to come out. All right, guys, I'm done. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm passionate about my journey, my lifestyle, and I really, really try to help those that want to are thinking about embarking on a lifestyle like this by trying to spread what I've learned so far. And I've only been in it seven months. There are, there are van lifers out there who've been doing it longer than me, who are true van lifers and nomads who can teach you way more than I can. I'm just teaching you guys from my little um, beginner, my, from my little beginner self. I've only been doing it seven months, so. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I'm going to wrap this up and eat this for lunch tomorrow. But guys, it's, we're, we're not done. I'll see you in the morning because we're going to go have breakfast at a really cool breakfast spot uh, that I found about nine minutes from here. So it's not going to be no IHOP or anything like that. So we're going to go have breakfast tomorrow morning. I'm looking forward to it. So I got to stop eating now. So by the time we eat breakfast, it'll be about, I'll be fasting about 13 or 14 hours. And for those of you asking about what's like the relevance behind my fasting, honestly, it's just health purposes. Um, nothing more, nothing less. And I've been doing a crap job of it. Uh, but that's a different story for a different day. I just fast for health purposes. So that's it. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up. This is gonna be my lunch tomorrow. And I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning for breakfast. Woohoo, I'm excited. Breakfast. It's almost eight o'clock. And this is what it's looking like. It's starting to snow. Well, it's been snowing, but it's coming down a little bit more. Hopefully the roads aren't bad, but that's what it's looking like. Nice and quiet, it's still got cars in the lot. So yeah, so far so good. See you guys in the morning. That's what it's looking like outside, fam. It's very quiet, very peaceful. Still got some vehicles in the parking lot. Lots of them, actually. Uh, been up for the last few hours just relaxing laying down it's a little past seven i was supposed to be gone but it's okay no one's here but um i'm gonna get ready so we can go have breakfast the breakfast place opens up at eight so yeah i'll see you guys in a bit we are leaving let's roll there's a chair that's down like really? Hold on. There was a chair down blocking the exit and I, shoot, I thought it was a setup. Almost kind of got scared to get out. Look at that tight squeeze, but we don't get through it. You good, bruh? You good? Now let's roll. Let's roll.
let's go. Hopefully, they're good. Let's go. We are at the Detroit Pancake House. There we go. We're here. This is where we're going to have breakfast. So unfortunately, you're going to have to listen to my beautiful voice as the restaurant was playing really loud music. But I was so happy to be there. Usually I eat in my van, but when I walked in, I was like, I want to experience this. I love the ambiance of the restaurant, the lights, the, the tension of detail in the wood, uh, the view outside my window. I mean, look at that. that. That is so beautiful. It was a nice morning, and I was literally the only person in that restaurant. I was the first one to walk in. I ordered chicken and waffles, and let me tell you, those, they say those are chicken strips. No, hunty, hunty, those are bigger than chicken strips, juicy and fried fresh on the spot. Those eggs were creamy, by the way. When I say this was the best chicken and waffles I have ever had in my entire life, hands down 10 out of 10. I would give it a million out of 10 if I could. Waffles were freshly made. That butter was so good and creamy. And look at how, look, look at the, the crunch. Look at, look at the crispiness. The flavor on that chicken was freaking to die for. The combination of that syrup, that butter, the, the the seasonings, the juiciness of the chicken. I was in heaven. I literally wish I could have finished it all, but I didn't. But let me, oh, I'm salivating just watching this. Like literally salivating. I wish I could have shared with you guys, you know, the little setup in the van. But you know what? I was happy that I ate in the restaurant. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you guys a piece and I'm going to give you the first bite. So so have this bite right here. And I'm sorry I'm greedy because that's literally all you get. And I don't even think I offered it to you guys. I think I just showed you. So sorry for being greedy, fam. I really am. But you just don't even understand how good that meal was. And... Oh, I'm salivating and I'm fasting. <laughs> Please take me back. Look at that juiciness. The, 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 oh man, I can taste the waffles. If you're ever in the East Jefferson area, please take time out of your day to have breakfast there. Cause let me tell you, it's amazing. Simply amazing. The music was really nice. Um, it was a soft music. The waitress, she was very sweet. Um, at, you know, asked me if I needed anything, you know, didn't keep getting in my face. Let me eat. Let me enjoy my food. I loved it. And that is what I had left. And that was the best man. I didn't eat the strawberries. You know, I'm not a really big fan. Detroit house of pancakes is hands down so far one of the best breakfasts i have ever had and i've been to some mom and pop breakfasts here in michigan when i say that chicken was fried fresh the batter was deep fried and crispy the chicken was juicy the waffle was fresh the butter that syrup was buttery and so oh my god Please, if you have never been ever in your life to Detroit House of Pancakes off of Jefferson uh, Avenue, East Jefferson Avenue, please, please, please go. Go show them some love because, man, them, them women in there, boy, they know how to cook. Whoever was the cook, baby, it was just warm and welcoming when I first walked in. Uh, when I ordered, I was the first one in. Now there's a lot of people starting to come in there, but I waited a minute to get my food, but I see why they cooking that on the spot. That ain't no, that is no like, that ain't no um, uh, fr frozen food stuff that they just warming up. No, they are frying it fresh. When I said I was the best, them eggs were creamy. Oh. Please, please, if you have never been and you live in Michigan and you're in the area, go to Detroit House of Pancakes off of East Jefferson Avenue. Uh, total for the chicken and waffles and the eggs I paid um, and gratuities already included. 
I paid $27.28. Uh, gratuity was uh, $3.96. So um, total without gratuity was $22. Then they add the gratuity of $3.96, but then I tip $20. Um, I always tip waiters and waitresses. I tip. That's just how it is. Um, I tip. I try to tip very nice. I'm, But yeah. But uh, thank you guys for hanging out with me. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the video of me overnight camping in Detroit. Um, like I said, if you're ever in the city, you live in the city, uh, or you just want to you know, hang out in the city or whatever, and you live in your van or your vehicle and you want to spend the night overnight, uh, you know, the parking structures down there are cheap alternatives uh, to, you know, not only kind of stealth and blend in, but you feel safer. I felt safe. The area was nice. Uh, not only that, I woke up to a beautiful view. The city was lit. The, bu the buildings were lit. Um, it was nice. It was. A, I had. A, it really enjoyed myself. Um, I would have ate at a restaurant, but it was just too far of a walk, and um, there was really no restaurant parking. So that's why I cooked, which I don't regret because I love cooking. But I did have breakfast with you guys this morning. I didn't film it because they were playing music in there. So sorry about that, but. Um, I showed it, but that's why a lot of times I like to get my food and bring it back to the van so I can eat with you guys. But we had dinner last night, excuse me. We had dinner last night, so I you know, I went into the restaurant. I was gonna come out and eat out here in my van, but I was like, you know what? I want the full experience of sitting down eating, uh, the, the, you know, just the ambiance, and I'm glad I did. It felt so good being there, and just the culture, I just love it. Uh, so if you're ever in the area, please, 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 please check out the Detroit House of Pancakes. You will not regret it, man. Whoever's the cook in there, they know how to cook. Um, but yeah, it's it's time for me to go. Uh, I appreciate you guys more than you know. You guys are freaking awesome. I love reading your comments. You guys are funny. <clears throat> I love reading your stories. They're heartwarming, heartfelt, um, very engaging. Uh, thank you for the sharing your stories again on, under you know on my videos. That means the world to me. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you for taking a little bit of your time out of your day uh, to spend it with me when you could have literally been doing anything else. As always, I do appreciate our lunch, our, our dinner time, lunch, breakfast time, whenever time we have in the video, I do appreciate it with you guys. And thanks for you know eating with me. That means the world to me. But I really hope you enjoyed this video because I really enjoyed making it. Um, again, uh, I know there are people out there um, that <clears throat> can't afford to pay five or $10 for parking. But I, if you go through and watch my videos, I have showed you free alternatives uh, to stealth camping and parking that, I, that I've, done and I show you how I go about kind of scoping out places and looking for places and where to sleep and stuff like that so please check out those alternatives but again if you have a little bit of money and <clears throat> and you live in the city or close to the city and you're you just kind of want to switch up where you live again um, since downtown areas don't have a lot of parking or it's metered parking where you're constantly paying parking structures um, are um, an alternative. I would have paid for, you know, to park into a parking structure, which Detroit has a lot of those paid parking structures for cheap, five to $10. But my van is like nine and a half feet high. I wouldn't fit. So <clears throat> they also have open structures, uh, structures, but make sure when you go to purchase your, your um, parking online, if you decide to do that, you read the instructions because some of those parking uh, structures, even the ones that are outside, like the one I was at, they they don't allow <clears throat> big vehicles uh trucks big suvs to park there they'll tell you they'll be specific so make sure before you pay you read the instructions uh thoroughly um but the one i was at i was blessed i was fortunate it was safe i would definitely do it again but i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here and um start my day thanks for watching and as always i will see you guys in my next video take care peace